Hi everyone, this is a short video on Pied Beauty, a poem by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Gerard Manley Hopkins, or commonly known as G.M. Hopkins, he was a Victorian poet and he was born in 1844 and died in 1889. And um, he was an English poet and a Jesuit priest as well. He was a Catholic priest. And he, he was raised from a large artistic family and he showed talents in his very early childhood in music, drawing, poetry and he was a socialite. He was the center of attraction for many people even at the, uh, at the school time. Uh, he wrote prolifically, he wrote many poems. This is a short sketch of biography. Uh, he was born and brought up in Anglican Church, but in 1866 he chose or he converted into Catholic Church and in 1868 he made a drastic change in his life. He took a dramatic decision and he joined a uh, Jesuit order to become a priest and he, under, he had undergone uh, several years of formation to become a priest. And when he became a priest, he burned out all his poems and he did, not, he did not write again for many years because he believed that. Since he is a spiritual man, he believed that uh, writing poetry is against his intention of vows. He took vows and uh, he believed that um, writing poetry that is totally against his uh, priesthood because he, he thought that poetry involved or poetry demands much self-indulgence and pleasures so all those self-indulgence and pleasures were uh, against the woes as he considered he gave up his uh, interest in writing poetry because of uh, his interest in in spirituality he believed that writing poetry invites lots of pleasure, lots of self-indulgences and he believed that all those things were against his vows, his vows of chastity, uh, obedience and poverty. So all these uh, things, all these uh, pleasures are against his vows. So uh, he took the decision that uh, not to write poetry till death. But he, later he changed his mind and he, uh, he formed certain poetical forms and uh, meters and he wrote the first major work in 1875 that is the wreck of Deutschland and he and he and he wrote many poems and his last poems included terrible poems terrible poems um, and he died in Dublin in 1889 his poetry was not published until 1918 by Robert Bridges because he, does, he didn't want to publish his poetry at his lifetime because he never intended to have uh, pleasures from publishing or reading it or, or having uh, famous. So he didn't want to publish it. But his friend Robert Bridges published his works. The first uh, volume came into publication in 1918. Let's move on to the poetical styles of Jim Hopkins. Even though he was a Victorian poet, his poetical styles and forms were radically different from that of his contemporaries like uh, Tennyson, Robert Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Matthew Arnold, and D.G. Rossetti. And all those people were, they wrote poems in, in their own line and their own style and they were considered as Victorian poets. But James, Hop James Hopkins is uh, totally different in his style, in his presentation, and his use of imagery and his metrics. So, so he is not included in the Victorian line of poets. He used intense experiences. Every imagery in his poem is a rich factory of experiences. And he used sprung rhythm, an asymmetrical rhythm. Uh, which gave much complexity to his poems and he invented Inscape and Instress which uh, sp speaks of 
um, the uniqueness of a thing a thingness of a thing thingness of an object so inscape and instress and he beautifully explained depicted the god's grandeur the god as the creator the beauty of creation and he tried to praise god adore god through his poetry by analyzing the beauty of god's creation and uh, actually he was affected by or he was influenced by the doctrines of catholicism and he wrote uh, his poems in a new way in a new style that were totally different from that of that age the victorian age and we come to his one of the most important contributions that is sprung rhythm so sprung rhythm as we know it's a complex system of metrics is a complex system it's not an easy one it is against it is counter to what we specifically specifically call running rhythm or common rhythm because it is asymmetrical in style in, in its form it's asymmetrical so it's it's so complex and this rhythm is based on the metrical systems of anglo-saxon and traditional welsh poetry it's true that he was influenced by why he spent spent some of his years in uh, dublin and he came to contact with welsh poetry and he was to- in- moved by the styles of anglo saxon uh, poetry and uh, traditional welsh poetry that led him to invent a new style sprung rhythm it is a meter in which each foot having one stressed syllable followed by a varying number of unstressed ones so it's so uh, complex one stressed syllable syllable is followed by varying numbers of syllables so it's not in a regular way it's not a common uh, running form or rhythm we we have it's asymmetrical for example in pied beauty we see the first line glory be to god for dappled things this is sprung rhythm is asymmetrical stress stressed syllable is followed by varying number of unstressed syllables so he called it a sprung rhythm his next contribution is inscape and instress by inscape he means the unified complex of characteristics that give each thing its uniqueness and that differentiate uh, it from other things so it's a it's the uniqueness of a thing it's the particularity of a thing so that which make uh, something different from another thing so he means it by inscape he means the uniqueness the thingness of a thing and the uniqueness of a thing so everything every object everything in the world in the nature is uh, is unique and it has its own specifications and it is totally different from all other things so he was actually influenced and moved by duns scotus a catholic theologian and philosopher who lived in 13th century and he believed that only individual and particular things in this world can be known directly by human beings so only only particular things and individual things unique things can be known and can be um, understood by the human beings so that led him to um, to have more research on the uniqueness of a thing particularity of a thing or the thingness of an object and uh, he believes that inscape is the soul and spirit of a thing it is the inscape that is that makes Uh, a thing worth and it makes a thing meaningful an object meaningful so that is the uniqueness that is the soul and spirit according to w h gardner it is the name for the individually distinctive form of a thing so this is very this is totally different if you if you take 100 trees or 100 buildings each one is totally different from other things in its style in, in its color uh, in its form 
so there are different matrices different styles different specifications uh, which make one different from other things and so it is the outward reflection of the inward nature of a thing familiar to wordsworth spots of time emerson's moments and james joyce epiphanies so wordsworth wordsworth spoke of spots of time by spots of time he understood that and he used in his poetry uh, certain imageries which carries the past moments the myths or the temporal flow of uh, past so the pastness the time all those things are considered as spots of time he used such imageries from the nature to depict uh, his own ideas of or his own uh, imaginations of myth or the memories of the past and emerson's ralph waldo emerson's specific or brief moments he believed that particular uh, experiences unique experiences of nature are brief moments that are important that are unique and that are uh, brief moments and james joyce epiphanies so sudden experience sudden manifestation of a thing otherwise uh, which can be understood as uh, a normal thing so it's a sudden manifestation it's a new revelation of a thing so that is a unique thing so uh, inscape is familiar to or it resembles resembles uh, words words spots of time emerson's moments and uh, uh, james joyce epiphanies by instress he means the actual experience of a reader uh, that of inscape so the actual experience of reader of an inscape in an imagery so this is the actual experience the actual manifestation of the inscape it is received into the sight memory and imagination the poet's job is to find images that will nail the inscape down for readers so in order to understand the uniqueness of thing you should uh, you should ha- use the instress so the experience of the uniqueness of a thing or the way you experience the way you understand or the way you uh, get the meaning of the uniqueness or the inscape that is called instress so the way inscape is manifested we call it instress his another important contribution is kirtel sonnets he discovered a new kind of sonnets and it is called as kirtel sonnets and if he considered this poem pied beauty as a kirtel sonnets it means a shortened and a contracted sonnet it's not a traditional uh, sonnet we don't find the traditional uh, patterns traditional styles but it's a miniature it's a tra- it's a miniature or shortened form of traditional sonnets in traditional sonnets as we know in shakespeare or in spenserian Uh, in uh, petrarchan sonnets we have 14 lines but it consists of 11 lines he shortened it into, into 11 lines and he reduced octave eight lines to uh, sesset six lines and the second session six lines sesset to four and half lines so altogether we have 11 verses 10 and actually 10 and half verses the first stanza is the sesset and the second stanza is the quintain so 6 and 4 and 1/2 so 10 and 1/2 the rhyme scheme is a b c a b c d b e d these last poems are known as terrible sonnets terrible sonnets or sonnets of desolation he named it as terrible or desolation poems because of uh because of the pessimism he experienced or the depression he had because of the feeling that god has abandoned him so in this poem he questioned god and his providence he doubted the providence of god because he found many of his questions were unanswered he was a firm devotee he was so spiritual 
and he uh, he found that he was un- unanswered by god these are the main works by james hopkins bensi popolars pied beauty the wind over to christ our lord the wreck of dushland and at the end of the, his career he started to write uh, terrible sonnets and which we had seen pied beauty glory be to god for dappled things for skies of couple color as a brinded cow for rose molds all in stipple upon trout that swim fresh fire coal chestnut falls finches wings landscape plotted and pieced fold follow and plow and all trades their gear and tackle and trim all things counter original spare strange whatever is fickle freckled who knows how with a swift slow sweet sour adasu dim he fathers forth whose beauty is past change praise him the title of the poem pied beauty signifies the strange multicolored spotted beauty of the world God has created this world in a unique way with unique beauty of its own uh, there are strange opposite things which uh, adds more beauty to the created world so he wants to glorify god he wants to praise god so he praises god uh, through the description of variety of beautiful things uh, which are either pied or multicolored or which are opposites in its presence so its color taste speed brightness uh, everything is included in this poem so he adores god half at god having been uh, created this world he starts with an offering to god god glory be to god for the dappled things so he wants to glorify god so the structure of the poem we have first five lines and next five lines and finally he makes uh, a half line uh, which praises or which uh, demands others to praise god the first lines uh, these are the examples of dappled things in the world which are the multicolored things which signify signifies the beauty of god and the next lines next five lines depicts the quality of given examples so in the first five lines he gives which are the multicolored dappled uh, pied beauty in the created world uh, which are the things that add uh, more beauty to god and the next five lines depicts the quality or the characteristics of the given examples and finally he proves that we have to praise god for having created this wonderful world in such a way that we can relish it we can enjoy it we can live on it so we come to the first line glory be to god for dappled things dappled means spotted speckled pied multicolored things everywhere you find multicolored things it's not a single single colored world we have it's a multicolored everything is different strange changed and you cannot find a homogeneous pattern in the world it's multicolored it's heterogeneous so glory be to god for dappled things for creating this wonderful world in such a way that we can enjoy it so god must be praised so next line for skies of couple color as a brinded cow skies of couple color we know how does the sky look like it's couple color it's colors that um, makes more beauty to the sky beautiful evening so sky is always multicolored sometimes it is blue deep blue or sky blue and white sometimes it is uh, brownish and reddish and there are multicolored so it changes according to the time in the morning at noon and at evenings 
the colors are totally different so the sky is of couple color sky sir sky is always of couple color as a brinded cow you know what is brinded cow having brownish yellow or gray, gray coat with spots or streaks of a darker color cows with uh, multiple colors uh, dots spots so as a brinded cow so sky is so beautiful as a brinded cow just like the color just like the pattern of the cow the sky is beautiful so he makes the comparison between the sky and the brinded cow for rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim for rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim rose moles means reddish spots on the skin reddish uh, spots on the actually that that is the skin of uh, trout a fish a kind of fish stipple pattern of spots a technique in painting Uh, using dots so for rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim trout is a kind of fish and uh, uh, upon on the fish the skin of the fish we find spots stipples uh, fresh fire called chestnut falls finches wings so when he says fresh fire called chestnut falls he means that when uh, fresh fire fresh chestnut falls uh, falls from the tree it is wide open and the brownish reddish color of the chestnut is seen and it is seen uh, covered with a thick uh, cover and when we see it in uh, fall having been fall fallen in the ground it is just like a fire coal a burning fire covered with ashes so that is the difference that is the beauty of the world and uh, finches wings finches is a kind of fish having so many patterns in the in its wings so finches wings this pattern it is multicolored so finches wings means the wings of bird that has multicolored wings fresh chestnut and uh, finches wings is wings of uh, multicolored things multicolored beauty in the world mm-hmm. and the next line we have landscape plotted and pieced fold follow and plow so from the lines 5 to 6 he speaks of uh, worldly beauty strange beauty multicolored beauty which are created by god created by man god created the world and man also making Uh, certain changes and certain creating certain uh, beauty in the world adding more beauty to the creation of the god so fold fold means a fenced area for uh, sheep and uh, fallow a field that has been left empty there are places in the landscape you find a certain area which are left empty which without agri uh, without cultivation and landscape plotted and pieced so man has made his land plotted and pieced fold some are left for the uh, sheep and fallow uh, left empty and plow some are uh, plowed to raise uh, crops there and all trades their gear and tackle and trim tackle means equipment equipments trim also mean the same um and all trades so he speaks of all trades and the equipments the men have so all these things are different we use different things in our routine life different equipments different instruments so all things are multicolored all things are different and it adds more beauty to god all things counter original spare strange contrasts which are opposite uh, unusual um, so all things are all counted all things original spare or strange so from lines 7 to 9 uh, the poet sums up the general qualities he admires in such dappled things he made he made a list of dappled things in the world and he, now he wants to analyze it he wants to add more qualities to all these things 
so he admires the coexistence of contrary things he admires their uniqueness your uh, its individuality its originality uh, so he wants all things counter original spare strange whatever is fickle freckled who knows how so whatever is fickle whatever is changing fickle means to change uh, irregularity so we find irregularity strangeness changing things in the world which are so beautiful and freckled you find certain faces children's face with a reddish spots so that's freckled faces so the entire world is like just freckled is potted is uh, it's filled with different kinds of things different uh, modes of things so who knows how how did it happen who makes this a uh, grand beauty who makes this grand design so only god can do that so he praises god for his freckled world and the fickling world with a swift slow sweet sour adasil dim swift to speedy and it is slow so sweet and sour adasil so shiny adasil means to bright and uh, to shiny and at the same time it is dim so all these th- things are contrary uh, all things are uh, contributing to the beauty of the world so through all the contrary things all the radical opposites he adds more beauty to his son creation so it it is god who creates this world more beautiful he fathers forth whose beauty is past change he fathers forth his work he fathers forth means uh, he begets creates whose beauty is past change his beauty is permanent he never changes he is an unmoved mover he never changes in the philosophy we say we say god is unmoved mover and uh, his beauty is presence that is that never changes there is no fickleness in his uh, existence so he fathers forth he begets he creates everything so beautiful and he is he is changeless his beauty is past change his beauty is past change means his his beauty is permanent he is permanent he is an unmoved mover so let's praise him so he is the source of all the beautiness in the world he is the source of all the strangeness all the multicoloredness and all the uh, spotted things in this world so he created this world with its strange with its multicolored attributes so let's praise him so that's all we need to do please share and like this video